Hi there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Belinda. Welcome to my studio. I have a very fast little printmaking demo for you today that is a light field landscape monotype. This is done with no press. Okay, let's make something. Here's a supply list. You can do a screen grab or stop the video and jot them down. You can also visit my blog and look at the corresponding blog post to this print and there will be a list of supplies with links. This stuff goes by many names, polyester film, drafting film, mylar. If you don't have this, this is a matte finish, which is sort of milky, but still transparent. You can use a report cover, a sheet of glass, or a piece of plexiglass. You can either sketch directly on the plate or lay your reference material underneath the plate and trace it. I'm using a water soluble crayon here which rinses away with water. So your water is your eraser and you can make lots of changes until you like your sketch. If you're going to trace your reference photo, tape the plate down on one side so that you're creating a little bit of a hinge that's liftable and tape your reference material down underneath it so it doesn't wiggle around while you're drawing. You can use plexiglass as your printmaking plate or you can use it as an ink or paint palette. In this video, I'm gonna use it as an ink palette to manipulate Akua inks with transparent base, which is that clear liquid that you you see and between the yellow and the dark gray and a square edge or flat paintbrush to mix colors. To keep this video moving along I'm going to show each start of painting on the plate in real time and then I'm going to speed it up like this so that we can avoid boredom. Akua inks are made with soybean oil and they wash up with water but that doesn't mean you should use water to thin the ink before putting it on the plate. The manufacturer recommends that if you want to thin the color and make it more transparent you use some kind of modifier fire. In this case, I'm using transparent base, which is the same base material that the ink is made from minus the colored pigment. It works beautifully if you want to see through the ink and see your brush marks, as you can see that I'm doing here. The burgundy of the tree had lots of visible uh, brush marks, but I'm going to go over that and add layers to the color. It won't dry on the plate, so you have plenty of time to work on it until you're ready to print. These inks dry by absorption, so if you're using a good printmaking paper with very little sizing in it, your ink will dry quickly. Now here's a tip related to your reference photo. Print one copy the same size as your plate and use that as your reference photo while you're building the monotype and then print a second version of it with the same image flipped horizontally so it will match the print after you transfer it to paper. So the tree is on the right right now but after it's printed the tree is going to be on the left and it helps to have a photo the same exact reference photo with the tree on the left. So you can compare your lights and darks and use that as a new reference photo if you decide to add other media like colored pencil or oil pastel or pastel or whatever media you choose on top of your monotype. Since you need plenty of time to work the plate and take your time building the image, if you don't have Akua ink and let's say you have acrylics, they dry pretty fast, but you can buy a product that's made by Liquitex that's called Slow Dry Fluid Retarder. And if you mix that with your acrylics, it will prohibit or slow down the drying time which increases your blending and painting time significantly. The other thing I want to mention is that when you're changing colors drastically like I've done here with the yellow, you can rinse your brush in clear water but be sure to blot it with a paper towel or a rag so that it's relatively dry before you go and pick up a new color so you're not thinning the pigment with water if you're using Akua ink. And with Akua, since it doesn't dry on the plate, there's nothing to absorb into, it stays wet for so long that as you're going along, if you decide I don't like this passage. You can use a wet paper towel and just wipe an entire section out or use a damp cotton swab to remove small shapes. Like for example, if you wanted to make some holes in the trees or the little white areas that I painted around in front of that tree are meant to be street signs. And if I didn't want to paint around them, I could have just filled that in and used a piece of paper towel wrapped around a fingertip to blot the ink away and add new colors to it. So with Akua ink, since it doesn't dry, you are afforded lots and lots of time. And so that encourages experimentation and mark making with different materials, or like I'm doing here, I'm adding a dark layer of transparent blue to the tree. So if you're working with a transparent plate and you've kept your reference photo underneath the plate as a color guide, take frequent breaks where you lift the plate on the non-hinged side and just pull it up enough like a page of a book so that you can peer through the color you've applied to the top without the benefit of the reference photo showing through and see how your mark making looks and how your colors look and whether or not you have enough opacity in the ink to transfer to 
to your printmaking paper. If I were printing this on a press, the amount of pressure to transfer the ink to the paper would be enormous and I would get a much cleaner print with a lot more ink transfer. But when you're transferring ink by hand and you're rubbing it with a baron, there's just no way to get all of the ink to transfer off the plate and onto the paper as quickly and as accurately as you can with a press. So taking that into consideration, I'm adding lots of ink on here because I know that a lot of it will be left behind. Part of that is also due to the fact that I'm using a matte finish mylar or drafting film. If you have the option, make this on a glossy finish drafting film or a piece of plexiglass and your ink will transfer and lift off of a glossy surface much quicker more efficiently than it will off of the matte surface. I like to experiment with a lot of different mark making tools. This is a cool little brayer made by Takash, the same company that made my etching press there in New Mexico. And I'm using it to roll over the wet ink to see if it'll work as a blending tool to sort of uh, squish the pigments together and soften the edges where the boundaries are between the yellow and the green and the green and the blue. I've used this method before to soften brush marks if I wanted less static of brush marks in the background. Sometimes I want lots of brush marks like in the trees, but in the sky, not as much. It worked to flatten some of the mark making from my brushes, but it didn't work as well to remove those hard lines between the colors. So I'm using a rinsed and dried brush to scumble the ink around and soften those edges. Now, if the inks seem a little dry to you when you're working on yours uh, with a brush like this and you don't feel like the ink is moving around enough, you can just dip your brush into a little bit of the transparent base and move the ink around that way. Your other option is to be a little bold, grab a whole new unrelated color that's not even in your reference photo and just start moving it around in the ink and playing. One of the beauties of Akua inks is, like we've talked about, they don't dry on the plate. They'll only dry when they are absorbed, so they've got to be on paper. So when you're working on a plate like this, even if you were to leave the inks and the plate out for a couple of days, the inks might air thicken, but they won't dry. So you have lots of time to work on it. It's like working in oil painting, where you can remove things, add things, wipe them away, redo them, blend them together. Your options are incredible, and it's really fun to experiment and take things out and add things in. Make some of the areas more transparent, add more ink to make other areas more opaque. I'm darkening the foreground on the left side to anchor the base of the composition. I'd like things in the foreground to be uh, with lots of ink, lots of opacity so that it transfers to the print. And then as things move away in the background, I'd like them to get more transparent as they recede into the distance. I'm printing this on BFK Reeves lightweight printmaking paper, which has been dipped in water and blotted thoroughly. I'm going to use a wooden baron to transfer the print, but if you don't have a baron, you can use a spoon. And since the back of the paper is damp and I don't want to pill it up with the pre pressure from the baron, I've got a piece of uh, Tyvek packaging, which is like a potato chip bag that's been clipped and cleaned of all oil, and it makes a nice slippery surface for using the baron to press hard on the back of the paper. If you peek at your print like I'm doing here, make sure that you're holding your paper to plate down so that there's no wiggling. There can be no movement between the paper and the ink until you're ready to pull the print off. If you notice areas that need harder pressing, use a metal spoon. Now this is where you'll see how the image is reversed and now the tree is on the left. The ink is still wet, so it is a little darker on the paper, but after it dries, it'll lighten and I'll get to use colored pencil. Here's the print dry and then touched up with some colored pencil. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you make a monotype. If you have any questions about the process or the supplies, leave those in the comments. I always love hearing from you. If the video was useful to you, please leave me a thumbs up so I know how it was received. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. And then if you want more details on printmaking or watercolor painting, go visit my blog, belindadelpesco.com and sign up to subscribe there be, or just poke around. There is over a thousand posts on both both printmaking and watercolor because I started it in 2005. So it's a deep wide well of great information 
that's meant to help you in your creative journey, especially if you're interested in exploring printmaking in a variety of methods or watercolors. So that's it. Happy printing, and I'll see you in the next video.